Let's talk about Wernicke-Korsakoff syndrome. So this is a syndrome that is caused by a thymine deficiency, which is also vitamin B1. And there's two components. The Wernicke encephalopathy is the acute encephalopathy consisting of the triad of confusion, ophthalmoplegia, and ataxia. And this affects approximately 1-2% to of the population through autopsy studies. And the more permanent syndrome is called Korsakoff syndrome and that primarily affects memory and is a consequence of long-standing Wernicke encephalopathy. So the most common association is alcoholism and that's present in over 50% of patients and uh, it causes thymine deficiency through a few different mechanisms. First, there's inadequate dietary intake, there's reduced GI absorption, there's decreased hepatic storage from the hepatic dysfunction caused from alcohol, and there's impaired utilization as well. Uh, but there are some other um, conditions which can be associated with malnourishment, and that can include anorexia, um, long-term IV nutrition. Some of those IV nutrition formulas don't have thymine supplementation. There can also be malabsorption from bariatric surgery or GI disease that affects absorption. And then in other cases, there can be malignancies, transplants, dialysis, and AIDS that are all uh, associated with the disease. So in terms of diagnosis, it's a clinical diagnosis. The triad is not usually present, so you can treat presumptively in anyone that has any one of the three symptoms in the triad. So gait ataxia is the earliest symptom, and that usually precedes the confusion and ophthalmoplegia by a few days to weeks. The confusion can consist of disorientation or inattentiveness, and the ophthalmoplegia most commonly is nystagmus, uh, more commonly horizontal nystagmus than vertical, and bilateral rectus palsy is also common. There's some less common features including hypotension, hypothermia, vestibular dysfunction, and peripheral neuropathy. Imaging is not required for the diagnosis, but it can be done to rule out other causes of encephalopathy. So labs are not required for the diagnosis, however the most common lab that can establish the diagnosis is a low erythrocyte thymine transketylase activity and a 25% elevation after the, the addition of thymine. So there are autopsy findings in Wernicke encephalopathy and these do correlate to findings that can sometimes be seen in imaging, but not always. So there is atrophy of the mammillary bodies, and that's a fairly specific finding and also present in 80% of cases. And in general, there is a symmetric distribution of lesions around the third ventricle, aqueduct, and fourth ventricle. So in the acute Phase, there can be vascular congestion, microglial proliferation, and petechial hemorrhages, and chronically there can be demyelination and gliosis. So here's an example of what you might see. In the coronal view on the MRI, you might see enhancement of the mammillary bodies here, and MRI is more sensitive than CT. And then you can also see the periventricular changes mentioned earlier. Treatment can begin without sending labs or imaging, and this consists of IV thymine, 500 milligrams, three times a day for two days, and then you can follow that up with 100 milligrams daily oral as an outpatient. Uh, the reason that oral thymine is not initiated at the onset is because it can be poorly absorbed in alcoholic or malnourished patients. One thing to note and that is commonly tested is that IV glucose can worsen thymine deficiency. So administer the thymine first. And th this is done in a lot of emergency rooms where when they are about to administer IV glucose, 
as part of protocol they'll give some thiamine either with it or before it. In terms of prognosis, untreated patients can progress to stupor and death. Uh, with treatment, the ophthalmoplegia has the best chance of recovery and it improves within hours to days. The confusion improves over days to weeks, but only a minority recover from the ataxia. Uh, any permanent memory impairment is called Korsakoff syndrome.